Hi everyone, Rebecca again. All that stuff, we're talking about bike expedition riding and all that stuff that was spread out on the table. Um, my pool table in my basement is now on this bicycle. And so this is my home away from home, my rolling home on wheels uh, for the Iditarod Trail Invitational, a 300 plus mile self-supported bike packing event. So I want to show you kind of how I organize it. It's kind of like the rooms of a house. So I've got my kitchen, <laughs> I've got my closet, I've got, you know, a cooking area and everything has its place. And my goal is to have everything I need and nothing I don't. And you can tell from, you know, going out into the backcountry, carrying enough clothing and food and safety equipment for yourself, it really weighs the bike down. So it's super important how it's packed and where everything is. So I'll just start at the front of the bike. One of my goals is always to keep the front of the bike as light as possible because that really helps with handling. If you put a whole bunch of weight on the front, it really changes the way the bike rides. So the, the goal is really to keep the heaviest items inside the bike frame, um, low down, you know, close to the center of bike as possible. So this front roll right here, this white tube, that's loaded with things like a down jacket, extra gloves, my down over boots if my feet get really cold. And it's all really lightweight, easy accessible stuff. There's openings on both sides, so I don't have to take the whole bag out to get into it. I can just pull something out of the roll on the side. This front pocket here, this is my kind of my technology pocket. So this is where I keep a GoPro, um, trying to record this thing if possible. I keep a few snacks in here. Okay, so the cockpit of the bike, this is all the stuff that you want to have access to pretty regularly. Food, navigation, warm hands, um, some fluids to drink. You want all this right here, easily accessible. Got my sunscreen right here in this pocket so I can get any of these things out while I'm riding or without having to unpack a whole bunch of stuff. And that's just for efficiency. So I've got my Garmin, I've got my snacks. This is my little food trough snack bag in here. Got some goodies. I Once I eat something, I always put trash in here. Try to stay really organized so when I get to a trash place to throw trash away, I don't have to dig through all my pockets and things. So that's the little trash bin. And then inside these beautiful things, these are pogies and that's what keeps your hands warm and you shift and feel the brakes are all inside here. It's also a really great storage place to keep, um, keep things like a little squirrel in here. So I keep extra gloves, the right one in the right, the left one in the left. So I can uh, change gloves on the fly. I also keep hand warmers in these pockets, easily accessible. So I can break one of these open and just put it inside the pogey. And so then when I put my hands in, I got this nice little warm sleeping bag. So I keep those really accessible. I also put food in here when I, if it's frozen and I'm trying to warm the food up, we'll start it in there and see if I can, see if I can get it warmed up like gels and chews and things like that. Got navigation and then moving down the bike in this frame, in the frame bag, that's where we put the heavy stuff. So I've got my, um, this is kind of like the shop. So I've got my headlamps in here, two headlamps. I've got my bike tools in here. I've got an extra tube, um, a Leatherman repair type items that are kind of heavy go in here. It's also an overflow pl place for food um, if I needed to put it there. On the other side, a pump, a multi-tool, also easily accessible. So if I do have to do some bike repair, it's just right there and I don't have to dig too far into the bags. Um, let's see. Let's go to the back here. So this is like kind of like the kitchen and the bedroom area. So my minus 40 C to Summit sleeping bag. This is my emergency shelter or if I sleep outside, um, that's going to be it. No tent or anything like that. Just sleeping bag and a bivy and a pad. In this side over here, this is my stove and fuel. If I need to heat water or melt snow and heat water, um, a thermos to put warm fluids in or a recovery drink or things like that. So this is kind of the kitchen area. And again, keeping the weight kind of on the frame instead of out front. 
on this other side this is sort of this is my closet and i've got in here extra gloves um, my wind rain jacket waterproof jacket waterproof pants so basically things that if I wanted to put on another layer really quickly without getting into the front bag, I could just grab it from here or shed a layer and put it on back. I've also got my extra sunglass, uh, different lenses for night, clear lenses for nighttime, and that all stays in the closet. I have a strap right here on top of my sleeping bag and this is a nice quick easy access place if I want to take this shell off for example I'm getting warm while I'm riding instead of having to get all into the bags I just tuck the shell under here soft shell cinch it down and then it's ready to go on off on off because layering and changing your clothes is something that that has to happen a lot in a winter expedition so you're on and off with clothes so not only is the bike a cargo system for carrying a bunch of stuff my body also has to be a cargo system in sub zero temps anything that you need to keep warm food electronics that kind of stuff needs to go close to your body and you act as a little furnace so my clothing has a lot of pockets and things on the inside to keep my stuff warm so we'll go through the intricate layering system here so I've got my vest, which is kind of one of my main pieces and lots of back pockets here that I can put food, um, electronics, batteries, and keep those warm. And then one layer deeper, we have my hydration system that I've altered to, the hydration system has to be close to your body to keep your water from freezing. And then my tube is routed so that I can always reach it. It's right here inside my clothes, but close to my mouth. And then I've also altered it to, I made these pockets here and that keeps my satellite tracking device, my Garmin inReach, that keeps that warm close to my body. I've got some snacks here warming up close to my body. My cell phone stays in there to take pictures, but it's also all easily accessible. So I can just do one unzip and uh, reach inside and grab those things. There's so much time spent opening, closing, dealing with your equipment. So little things like being able to reach inside your jacket and pull something out that you need while you're moving, that saves you a lot of time over 350 miles. So that's it, that's the system. All right, so the conditions in Alaska are pretty extreme. <laughs> it could be minus 50 and windy, which is super duper cold. So not only am I taking precautions for my body to stay warm, in those temps, but there's also some pretty specific um, super cold weather adaptations that I've made to the bike. So one example is uh, the brakes. So instead of hydraulic brakes, um, these are mechanical brakes because the hydraulic brake fluid can freeze. And so mechanical brakes are reliable and they're gonna work no matter what the temperature is. Also inside the tires, I have a special sealant from Orange Seal that is for sub-zero temperatures. So with tubeless tires, you have the sealant inside, but you need to use this specific one to keep, um, so that the fluid will actually work and do its job and, and keep your tires sealed. I also have studded tires on because in Alaska, I will be riding on frozen rivers and lakes and uh, it's pretty terrifying. That's one of the scariest things, but studded tires to make sure that I've always got traction. And then when I get to Alaska, I'll go to the shop there, Speedway Cycles, and they will actually rebuild my wheel hubs and the bearings um, to put special cold weather lubrication in there that isn't gonna freeze. And, and that, that's how they do it in Alaska. So that's how I'm gonna do it here. <laughs> So this is the Alaska rig for year number two. Going back year number two, a lot more educated about what riding in Alaska is like, a lot more educated about the equipment, tighter with my gear, I'm in better shape, and I feel really good about it. I'm still nervous about the terrain and the conditions that I'm gonna be riding in, but I'm confident in myself and my gear, and that's a really good feeling. And so this is how it looks, all loaded up. I'll leave in a couple days and, um, I'm actually really excited, really excited to see what's out there. And uh, what I hope for you guys is that going through my bike and my equipment and my process will help you get the wheels turning for your next adventure and uh, plan uh, whatever it is that you've been dreaming of. Mm -hmm.